Hello, everybody. In short, it is like this. I made 20,000 euros a year renting out my camper van. But I was very disappointed in human beings. And I found out that the peer-to-peer -peer rental platforms like Gobuni and Camp2, they are not completely honest. The rental platforms don't tell the complete truth. So in this honest video, I will tell you all about my experiences of renting out my camper van. So in this way, I hope you will be better informed to make your own decision. I decided to not rent out my camper van anymore. So, do you want to know all about it? Let's go. But before we start, I want to mention four things. Number one, we are sort of revamping the what, why, when Wednesday videos. Uh, but in these videos, we want to be more about uh, ex explanation and education. So uh, watch out for that. The second thing I want to share with you is that my experience is based on one year renting out our one year old professionally converted Volkswagen transporter long wheelbase camper van. And based on this, uh, you will see my experience. And that's what I will share. And because the camper van is now sold, I'm filming this uh, inside of our new adventure. This is a, you are now inside a container that we are converting into a tiny house, a tiny house on wheels, or even a tiny hotel on wheels. All of that uh, you can follow on YouTube as well, uh, but that's a different series, uh, and we have just started that. So you are now more or less getting a sneak peek on things to come. And the fourth thing, the fourth and last thing, the fourth and the final, the final thing is that um, it is impossible to go in every aspect total in total depth. So I will not do that. But if you need more information, then I invite you to just put that down below in the comments. Put down your question or your remark or I don't know what. Put it down below and I will get back to you. That's a promise. And of course, if this was very helpful to you or you made your decision and things like that, we would like to know. And just a thumbs up uh, would be very much appreciated. And now, we've got that out of the way. So, first things first, let's talk money. How much money did we make and how did we make it renting out this uh, camper? We did quite a bit of research on that, and we would like to show you. I wrote it down. Yeah, there is a, there is like nice graphs that I made, um, like that. Um, of course, you will get them nicely on the screen. I think they will be there, or perhaps there. I hope it works. But okay, um, first I think you should know how we got our tenants or our renters. Um, we had three streams. The first stream was our own website. Just for this purpose of renting out the camper van, I built our own website. It was not difficult, it was not fancy, but it was nice. And I think we, you know, it helped us quite a bit. But of course, uh, we had this YouTube channel and we had other uh, like Instagram and things like that. So perhaps people came through those channels, YouTube, Instagram, also to our website. Not sure. The second stream is um, Gobuni. Gobuni was a relatively small one. And the other one is Kemtu. So three places where you could rent um, the camp. My own website, Camp2, GoBoon. The total amount of money that we got on our bank account was 20,000 euros. So 20,000 in total for one year. But that is, of course, including taxes and no, no costs have been deducted, but pure income, 20,000. 
that's a thing because I expect that some of you will not uh, mention these incomes to the tax agency. So I will expect that you don't pay your VATs. I will continue as I did it, as we did it, because I think this is the way you should do it. If you make a different decision, it's totally up to you. I don't think they get responsible for that as well, but um, yeah. th this is how it is. So in total, we had 13 different customers. And they were spread like this. So six, maybe you should see it there or there. I don't know. <laughs> this is on you for me, yeah? so please forgive me. But we had like uh, six customers that came in through my own website. We had one customer that came in through GoBooney, and the other six came in through Camp2. And then we have a look at those same figures on a different approach. Let's have a look on income. So if you look at the income side of things, um, our own website made over 11,000 euros. So we had uh, less than 50% of customers coming in. We have more than 50% of income coming through my own website. Camp2 was almost 8,000 euros and GoBooney was uh, 1,700 euros. So when you would compare those two graphs with each other, it means that either people were uh, renting longer through my website or the more expensive periods. Yeah. And that, that's what you also can see in the amount of weeks. Uh, because in total, I rented out the camper van 24 weeks. And of those 24 weeks, 12 weeks were through my own website. So that's 50% spot on. 10 weeks through Camp2 and 2 weeks through uh, GoBooney. So there you can also see that actually the income or the, the renters through Camp2 were usually short periods and also not, not too much income you get from that. But still, uh, they did a good job, Camp2. They brought seven renters to me, or six renters to me. If you need more information, you will want to know more about this, uh, just ask me in the comments below, and I will get back to you. And then, the thing that I want, would like to say, because I always told them to my renters, uh, okay, you are coming in through GoBooney or Camp2. And later in the process, I told them that you can also rent through my own website. Or when I, they came in through my own website, I also let them know that, it's some, that you can also rent at GoBooney or Camp2. If that made them feel more confident, more sure about yeah, the, the thing that we were about to agree on. Uh, because yeah, there is like a 1500 euro deposit that they needed to pay either through me or through GoBooney or Camp2, but maybe leaving that deposit as a third party might be good for them. So, um, it was their decision, I let them know. Oh, and one other thing is that I more or less could advertise myself uh, through a watermark on my photos on the GoBooney and Camp2 website. So, uh, yeah, the photos that I placed there, I had, uh, yeah, it's not a direct link, but you could see the name of my website uh, printed in a watermark on those photos. Um, I'm not sure if that helped, but uh, yeah, um, I can imagine it did. Uh, but it, it's all linked to being honest, I believe. So, and that means, I think, that the renters made a conscious decision where to rent the camper van for the van. And that is remarkable because Kabuni, Camp2, they have a markup of about 15 or even 20% of my price. So, to be honest, my price was always the same. So if you go through my website, you pay this amount. If you go to Camp2, you pay this amount for the same week with the markup that Camp2 has. You could have already seen that about 50% of customers were willing to pay those 15 to 20% extra. And the feedback I got on that was that they felt more confident, that they had more trust 
in the companies like GoBoody or Cam2. And this, having a trustworthy image yeah, for those peer-to-peer -peer rental platforms, that is one of the things that they are working for. Of course, next to having like a big network. Yeah, of, there's a lot of uh, renters and rentees and uh, they, they, they meet each other on those platforms. And of course, that's also uh, a nice way, a good way of doing it. Eh? So that's what, what, what the business is. But next to that, they are trustworthy. And, um, or they say they are trustworthy. But in reality, this is not true. This deposit, for instance, can be highly contested. Highly. So, um, I will tell you more about it later on in this video. But trust me, it is not what they say. So, before I give you a quick resume of the first part of this video, I would like to share two things with you. First, I think my prices were too low. So, potentially, I could have made more money. I made a conscious decision at the beginning of my rental periods, make sure that I rent out the, the van, that I get positive reviews, and based with those positive reviews, I expected that I could make more money in the summer months. And so, that I would be able to rent out the, the van more, better, higher prices. Um, but the reality was that um, the period at the beginning of the year, but also at the beginning of in the summer period, they were all booked more or less through each other. So the result was that my uh, prices in the summertime were not high enough and that I had dumped prices in the spring. And I also rented out my van for short periods. So like two days, three days, long weekends. And I should not have done that. So, uh, because that's a lot of work, a lot of effort for re relatively low income. There's one other thing, and that is that um, for the income, Gobuni and Camp2, they estimated my income. Eh? So they, they, they have like these uh, adverts and you can calculate things. And they uh, estimated that my yearly income could be around 15,000 euros. So I made 25% more. So you could say we did better than the prediction. Quick recap. We got 20,000 euros of income. We rented out the van for 24 weeks and it was 13 different rental companies. So then we take a step to the next topic. So the income, of course cost. Because um, the value of the van was 100,000 euros, beginning where we bought it. So with a 20,000 income, you could say that you made a 20% return on investment. If you made that in a year, pretty decent. But of course, there's more to the picture than just the money you get in on your bank account. So let's talk cost. So of course, we have the initial investment of 100,000 euros. We get write-offs on that. The customers in total drove 30,000 kilometers. But for a Volkswagen Transporter, eh, this van, uh, 30,000 kilometers a year is normal. And so there's not a big issue there. And yeah. I paid my taxes, I paid VAT. So that's 21% of income that you say to the tax agency, you have it. Um, I think that you should do it like that. But I can imagine that others will not do it like this. Fine, I will not judge you. You do it the way you do it. Insurance and road tax are both uh, quite a bit higher uh, when you rent out your vehicle and the last line is damages and that can hurt quite a bit because you're not prepared for that and because you're not prepared for that um, there could be some headache and I'll tell you about that later on so baseline is that the 
total income without taxes just for us 10,000 euros so 20 to 10,000 but then 10,000 with an investment of 100,000 is still 10% right so still not bad still not bad uh, I think a lot of people would be uh, happy with it we're not there yet So, uh, another part of cost, which I think is cost, is my time that I invest in this van. Of course, I need to clean it, I need to explain to every new customer how things work, and uh, things like that. So, per rental period, I estimated or I calculated that I would need around 15 hours uh, per rental. So, that's quite a bit. So if you do a quick calculation from those 15 hours, I, you could say I made about 50 euros per hour on my bank account. So, and that also equates uh, to, those, to the 10% again. So um, yeah, it, it still is, is good. Yeah, it's, um, it's an investment of your time, it's an investment of your money, but still it is decent uh, return on investment. So, a lot of people will be happy with it. Quick recap what we thought, what we told so far. 20,000 income goes to, with, when you deduct all your cost, goes to 10,000 net income. We're all still happy. And that's the end of the money picture. And now the not so nice side of things start. And there is a whole story to tell about damages, about the way people behave when they make damages, and the way the peer-to-peer -peer rental companies behave in regards to damages. And that is what I would like to share here. And I think you will be surprised, and I think you will understand why I don't rent out my equipment anymore. And here as well, we have done some research and we will make some graphs and overviews for you. Out of the 13 times we rented out the van, uh, six times the van came back in a perfect condition. The people were very careful with the van, they cleaned it also when they got back. And you could see they had a really nice time and they, they were more or less in love with the van. It's really true. So six times. So this, it's less than 50% of the times I got it back like it should. Seven times I did not get it back as I should have got it back. With damages or dirty, I'll come back to you that later. And then three times of that, three times, that's almost 25%, it was terrible. So 25% of the times that you rent out the van, it comes back in a terrible state damages or very 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 dirty my idea is to highlight the issues the three main issues that we had and that maybe will help you make up your mind but before we can do that we need to explain a few things. before i rent out my vehicle anyone I try to investigate on that person and so you can imagine that if I am going to give away my van with somebody I don't know I want to know a bit more about that person so and through my own website that was pretty straightforward hey you could call them you could um, have, have share more information ask for their Facebook uh, sometimes make an appointment uh, that, they, that you could visit that you could meet them face to face and yeah, that was fine but through websites like GoBoody or Camp2 it's a whole different story those websites do not allow you to uh, get in touch with a customer a potential customer other than through their website for instance if you would uh, put down a phone number I would say yeah, this is my phone number call me so we can discuss some things they would block actually block, eh, 
work out that number that you are sending to them. So through Camp 2 or GoBoonie to get a real feeling about who is there renting your van or trying to rent your van, it's very, very difficult. And I also uh, contacted Camp 2 about that quite a few times, uh, saying that I, yeah, I was really looking forward to doing my own investigation about people going to rent with me. It is, of course, a 100,000 euro vehicle that I'm giving away. And when I asked Camp 2 this directly, I had a personal line. They said to me, that literally, we cannot do that. Because you might be able to make an agreement outside of Camp 2, or even through your own website. Well, I don't know what. So let's take a moment to chew on that. I, as a, yeah, a customer usually, yeah, I'm, I'm just a normal person and I am going to rent out my camper van to others, people I don't know. So the first mental hur hurdle I need to cross is I am going to do this to people I don't know. I need to trust an absolute stranger. So that's, that's a big thing, right? And then the first thing the intermediate peer-to-peer -peer company says to you, no, you cannot do that because we do not trust you. And if we then build on that, a company that is built and started on people trusting each other enough to give their precious property to someone else, that company, based on those principles, has learned enough to say, no, you cannot be trusted. You cannot be trusted. You cannot be trusted. And then the next example. Camp 2 says they are screening their customers. So actually, not their customers, but the customers huh, I get. And then I ask them, yeah, can you give an example of uh, how you screen them? Yeah, because if they screen them, then it's not needed that I screen them as well. They could not give me that. They could not give me a real screening. The bottom line is that they don't actually screen anyone. Why would they? They are not running any risk. The person who's running the risk is the person who's renting out his van or his camper van. Not Camp 2. They are just sitting there, taking that 20%, another 20%, another 20%, another 20%. No risk. You are taking the risk. And then the next step. You are running the risk, and then you want to minimize the risk, right? You want to reduce your risk. But you are not allowed to, because you cannot do any research. How I look at this is that the companies not wanting to have, uh, have you direct contacting other people is because they are protecting their own interests, their own 15 or 20 percent. So, are you already looking at them differently? Hang on, there's more. And for that, I want to use the three major issues I just told you about as an example. Here we go. Please remember, I had 13 rental periods. And these are three real events. They really happened. So, Example, example number one, uh, a young couple uh, coming from Amsterdam. I got them through my own website. He is an uh, inspiring doctor. She is still in university, so yeah, well educated, things like that. And they were lovely. They were, no, they were lovely. I, I really liked them on a personal level. So, uh, and I trusted them. I really did. But the way they brought back the van 
It was so, so dirty. Really dirty. There was yogurt everywhere, especially in the on Hall Street, on the seats, and the, oh, it was terrible. And then they spilled uh, olive oil. They put a bottle of olive oil inside one of the cupboards, in the, the drawers. But they did not put it upright, but they put it horizontally. So it was everywhere in the cupboard, but also on the floor. And um, it, it, it took me so long to clean it. Let's get to example number two. That's uh, a couple. A couple with two kids, so in total four people in the van. I did not have contact with the women, only with the guy. And he had a really good job and he drove like a Tesla. And he also um, was one of the first uh, people uh, reacting on my website and booking there. So yeah, type uh, early adapter, I think. I think you get it. Oh, and I got them through my own website. And they brought back the van with damages. There was like a, a scratch and a dent and uh, in total, uh, when I needed to repair that uh, through a repair company, it would be 3000 euros. So, luckily, uh, in the end, also this guy uh, was a very nice guy and we, we came to a very solid agreement on how we would uh, solve the damages. So, I think he is happy yeah. and I was happy as well. Uh, but still, 3,000 euros worth of damages. And it's not only the damages I need to stress, but it's also the headache you get and um, the hassle you need to go through to arrange the quote for the damages. And uh, it's, it's just not worth it. And then we get to number three. And this is actually the worst. This is about the man who managed to let the previous two examples look like a walk in the park. It's, it's, this is a guy who I'm so tempted to say his name and to, but I will not. I will just tell you he was a teacher or he is a teacher, but before he was a teacher and they were going to Portugal. And he was a customer through Capital. And I have a, a list of all the damages. And I, I cannot do it from my head. So I, I wrote it down. Uh, they damaged the right side of the van. They had damages to the boot uh, of the van. So it was a scratch. They, had, they damaged the dashboard. So they had like a navigation system that they wedged in between um, two dashboard panels, so and there it damaged the dashboard panels. Uh, we have toilet solution that was totally broken off. Uh, they, the, the, there's a roof tent there was damages there, so the, on the stitching and on the, on the, on the, on the, on the folding system. Um, everything was dirty. They said they cleaned it. You could not see it. Um, and they were half a day too late. And then they, they said they did not do this. They did not do any of this. I, I could not speak. I, 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 I could not think straight. I could cry. I, I really, I really, really, I was, I was flabbergasted. It, this was, I was, yeah, so it was terrible. But there the story does not end. Because we now go to the row of camp two. And that is how the deposit system works. So hang on. And let's be honest. I'm sharing this story with an example of camp two. But I need to be honest, I had the same experience with uh, Gobuni a few years before, but then from the other side. So I was a customer renting a camper van. And I think the main thing to know or to 
keeping your mind is the following is that Gentoo or Gobuli, if one of their customers, because I'm their customer, but also the people who are renting is, is their customer, has a claim to the deposit, they cannot move or pay out the deposit. Did you get that? So if anyone still has a claim to the deposit, they cannot pay out the deposit. So that means that I, as a I, I'm renting out my van. I can give you every evidence. I can tell you everything. I can, I don't know what. Still, if the renter says uh, he does not want the deposit to be paid because he thinks he is entitled to it, Camp 2 will not pay out. Never. So, let's reflect on this. If you go rent out your van, you think you are taking a very well and respected company, you think you're covered, but you are not. And they are not telling you this. They are not being honest. And here comes my advice to someone who is renting or someone who is renting out a vehicle. And that's linked to what I said before. It does not matter what has happened, you keep on claiming your deposit. You just say, no, I, I think it's, I have right on that deposit. For instance, you rent a vehicle and you damage the vehicle. You say, no, it's because of the state of, uh, of maintenance of that vehicle. Or you say, ah, but the, the the landlord or the, uh, the person renting out this and then you say oh the person renting out this vehicle did not explain to me properly or you just uh, say uh, the picture that uh, we did not take pictures from the inside of the vehicle so how can he prove that the inside of the vehicle uh, was really undamaged when he when we took away the vehicle it does not matter you just say things to claim your right to the deposit and your goal should be to make it take as long as possible that should be your goal make make sure it lasts as long as possible this 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 back and forward about the deposit because there's a third party the third party is Kobuni or Kentu and what they want is at the end of the year or at the end of the period or the season, they want to get rid of all those claims. And they, do you know what happens then when they want to get rid of all those claims? There is a budget for unsolved claims, for unsolved issues. No, really, there is a budget or there is a person coming in or there is budget. Think about it, eh? The peer-to-peer -peer company knows that they need to have a budget for things like this. So, think about it, remember it, keep it in your mind. But when this peer-to-peer -peer company comes knocking on your door, it is no longer about who done it. It is only about what's gonna cost. So, what, what's worth it? What is it worth to you to close this claim? It's up to your negotiation skills and you are not negotiating with another person. You are negotiating with Kemtu or Gobuli. Keep that in mind. And this is also the second part of the proof that the peer-to-peer -peer companies know that people cannot be trusted. So they don't they not only need to make sure that we do not contact each other directly, but they also need to make sure that they have budget available for us to stop arguing with each other. And that budget we can take one step further in our mind. So you, you are a caring person. You're always, you're always well behaved and you handle other, pro other people's property nicely. You, sir, 
risk, you are paying 50 or 20 percent premium on top of your rental price in order to have a company like Cantu or Gobuni have a budget available to solve issues with the assholes, the people that damage other people's property and do not admit to it. Those people you are paying for with your 15 or 20 percent additional costs. Is that something you want? And there you have it. And to recap everything, you can make really good money renting out your van. But just take into consideration that about 25% of people renting uh, your vehicle are not going to be as caring about your vehicle as you are. And the peer-to-peer -peer rental companies, they are the world upside down. People taking a big leap, trusting other people, renting out their beloved van, caring and loving, results in a situation or a company where distrust and benefits rule. I hope you are informed about it and you can make your own decision. But I'm sorry, we are out. If this was any help to you, if you think this is uh, not right, or I don't know what, leave, an, leave a comment, leave a thumbs up, leave a thumbs down, uh, do something, tell us what, what you think this video did. Perhaps we can learn something from it, or perhaps you have learned something from it. Just let us know uh, down in the comments. Thanks for watching, we hope to see you next time, and then we will be doing happy things. Because then we will be showing you how we are building this container into the tiny house. And I'm, I promise you, it's going to be amazing. So, hope to see you then. Bye bye.